Hello everyone, welcome back. For a while now, I've been using this erosion node for quite a bit. And in the last video, I explained about the parameters of this uh, erosion node. But I have not touched on the topic of this particular node. So today, let's have a look at this uh, hydro simulation node. Now, this hydro simulation node will simulate the flow of water, but not erode the landscape. It also simulates the freezing and melting of the snow based on the temperature and also simulate the the sliding of the snow down the mountain so in this scene i prepared this landscape with a simple erosion and then i import that landscape into this so that i don't have to re-simulate the erosion and i placed a hydro simulation node on top of the existing eroded landscape Doing it this way, I don't have to rerun the erosion every time I change something in the node graph. So here is the hydro simulation. As you can see, it took 41 seconds to run this simulation. And this is the result. We have some ice on the top of the mountain. And at a certain height, the ice start to melt and becomes water and run down to the base and create a sea like this. Okay, let's go to the shader editor and have a look at the data channels. So here we have the usual data channels, but the flow is no longer the flow of uh, the water from the, the erosion node. This flow is from the hydro simulation and so is the end flow, right? And the hydro simulation kind of replaced the flow of the water as well as the uh, water channel. All right. And now we also have the snow channel like this. So let's go back to the geometry node editor. Now let's have a deeper look at the hydro simulation node itself. First, we have the water amount, which is the amount of water that will be added onto the landscape. And if we turn off this water over time, then this amount of water will be added onto this landscape at the beginning of the simulation. And then the simulation will just let that water run down the slope and into the sea like that. But if we turn this water over time on, then the water will be added for every iteration of the, the simulation. So let me turn off the uh, simulation and change some parameters here. Okay, this is uh, without the hydro simulation. As you can see, we have no snow and no water. And I will also turn off this generate convexity map because I don't use this in the, the material. But generating this map takes quite a bit of time, so yeah. Now I'm going to turn this off and run the simulation again. Alright, as you can see, we now have a lot less water. And the water is barely visible down here. Just a thin little layer of water. So when I turn this off, I have to increase the amount of water. But before I do that, I'm going to turn off the simulation. Now I'm going to resize this landscape to a lower resolution landscape because I don't want to wait 41 seconds every time I change something here. I'll go to the helper section and drop in the resample landscape node. Okay, here I'm going to resample this landscape to 256 there we go also I will transfer the debris channel the end debris channel right the wear channel and finally the end wear channel so as you can see we now have a lower resolution landscape and the simulations should be a lot faster so Let's reactivate the simulation. So as you can see, with just the five units of water at the beginning of the simulation is not a lot. So in this case, we need to increase the amount of water to something very high. Let's say 150 and let's see. There we go. We now have a lot more water. But if we do it this way, the flow channel will be a little bit different. So let me show you the flow. As you can see, we have a lot of water at the beginning of the simulation and that whole bunch of water will run down the mountain. So it's gonna spread everywhere. 
And because of that, we have a lot bigger water channels in the flow map. Let me return this to original values like that and turn on the modifier. As you can see, we now have sharper flow channels, right? So that's the effect of uh, the water. Now let's have a look at the freezing point. The freezing point is the temperature at which the uh, water begins to freeze or to melt. Right? And currently it's set to zero degree. Let me cut off this temperature map. All right. By default we have like 25 degrees, so the water will not freeze at all. Let me turn back on the default shader. As you can see, we don't have any snow at this point. So let me go back here and change the temperature to something very low. Let's say minus 50. The lower the, the temperature, the faster it will freeze. So in this case, minus 50 is quite a bit. And as you can see, we now cover the entire landscape with snow. And the snow kind of fall down the mountain, just like the debris. And you can actually use a texture as a uh, temperature map for the landscape. For example, let me just visualize this map right here. Okay, so this is the uh, simple height selector and I'm selecting a certain uh, height level. And I turned that into a uh, temperature map like this. So the black part will be 25 degrees and the white part will be minus 50 degrees. So this is the uh, temperature map. All right. And I feed this into the uh, temperature input here. All right, we have the freezing rate and the melting rate. The freezing rate is the rate at which the water kind of freeze in the freezing zone. Right? And the melting rate is the rate at which the ice kind of melt in the, the hot zone. But here I set the melting rate to zero, so there is no melting whatsoever. Once the water kind of freeze, it becomes snow forever. And we also have ice expansion. When the water freeze into ice, it expand a little bit, right? So this is the expansion rate of the water when it uh, freeze into ice. We have snow resting angle, which is the uh, pretty much the angle at which the, the snow stops sliding down the mountain. If the snow kind of have like a steep angle like this, it, it's going to slide down until it reach a certain angle, 25 degree, like that. And we have the slide rate, which is the rate at which the snow slide down the mountain. Currently, it's set to something very slow, all right? And we have the stickiness, which is the amount of snow that will refuse to slide down the mountain. And it's kind of uh, permanently stick onto the rock. Currently it's set to 1, so let me show you the snow map here. Alright, let's see the unnormalized snow. So as you can see, there's always snow sticking onto this rock and refuse to slide down. All right? And that's the effect of the snow stickiness. And next we have the iterations. The iterations is the uh, main sequence of simulation, right? During these iterations, the water will be continuously added onto the landscape. Once the iterations finished running, then the rest iterations will start running. And during the rest iterations, the water will not be added onto the landscape. The simulator will only simulate the flow of water, the melting of the ice, and so on. However, if you turn off this uh, water over time, then only the first iteration will the water be added. And uh, for the rest of the simulations, the iterations and the rest iterations are pretty, pretty much the same. Okay, that's all about the hydro simulation. It's a lot simpler than the erosion node because it does not change the overall shape of the landscape. So you can just play with it and experiment with these parameters to find the configuration that you like for your landscape. And also this hydro simulation node is only available for World Blender Pro. So if you want to have this node in your collection, please consider buying the World Blender Pro version. All right, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.